gentleman from Florida, Mr. Donalds, is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And first of all, to, to the witnesses, the the leaders of, of Exxon, Chevron, BP, Shell, I know that the climate activists in Twitter world, which Dave Chappelle says doesn't exist, and he's right because it's just people who have nothing better to do but type on their keyboards, and we do it too here in Congress. But let's be very clear. You need an apology because what I witnessed today um, was just rank intimidation by the chair of this committee. F trying to get you to pledge on what you're going to spend your money on is a gross violation of the First Amendment. And just because we're members of Congress and we got microphones and we pass laws does not mean that we also have the, the ability to infringe on your ability to what to organize, whether it's API or anybody else, or what you choose to spend your money on. It is disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. Somebody needs to go call Merrick Garland, tell him to get in here and watch the intimidation that came from this very panel today. Because this is not about defending big oil or defending big anything. It's about defending the ability of people in our country to be free, say what they want, think what they want, spend their money how they choose. And if we're not going to be any better than the Chinese, how do we ever expect to beat them on the world stage when we're cutting our neck when it comes to energy production, while they are burning more coal, they are burning more oil, they're increasing their emissions, and they're not showing up in Scotland. You know why they're not showing up in Scotland? Because they're interested in building an economy. They're interested in becoming the dominant economic player across the globe. They're interested in becoming the dominant military player across the globe. And while we joke around and mess around intimidating you guys who frankly heat our homes, you cool our fridges, you keep our cars going, this is insane. So I'm sorry for you. And I'm sorry for the people in our country who have to witness shenanigans like this and witness circuses like this. That's why they call that one show on HBO, whatever it is, The Circus, because that's exactly what this is. Madam Chair, I'm requesting that a letter be entered into the record. This is a letter written by Ranking Member Comer and the other ranking members on this committee that actually speaks to the chilling effect that has come from you, Madam Chair, asking you to stop intimidating companies, requesting information that is their First Amendment right to have that information. I ask that that be admitted into the record under unanimous consent. Without objection. Thank you, Madam Chair. I have a question for Mr. Summers, now that we're done with that. Mr. Summers, it was asked, it was asked earlier um, by a lot of the executives if they believe in electronic vehicles. Um, and it's a noble goal to have. But Mr. Summers, where does energy, the energy that, where does electricity production actually come from? Thank you, Congressman. Uh, before I address that question, I do want to clear one thing up, that a difference of views on electric vehicles is not climate disinformation. We as an organization support all forms of energy. We support the rapid uh, uh, advancement of electronic vehicles as well. But at the same time, what we don't agree with is that the federal government should be the ones that are funding that build out of infrastructure. The concern is, is that as we built out service stations across the country, those service stations have been developed not by the federal government, but by private industry. And members on this panel themselves are investing in building out that infrastructure, as is appropriate for the private sector. So real quick, Second of all, I think your question is very, very important, which is where does that energy come from? Most of the energy in the United States comes from natural gas. It has replaced coal as the primary source of energy in this country. Let me ask you this question as a follow-up. So if we don't have natural gas, and obviously the Democrats are against coal, where would we actually get the electricity to power all of these electric cars? Where would it come from? Well, Congressman, for most countries, and for certainly the United States, the energy, there, there would be likely a fuel switch back from natural gas to coal. Uh, and so real quick, Mr. Uh, Summers, and I don't mean to cut you off because you make a great point, but I got 30 seconds. It is important for the American people to understand that if you follow the idiocy that's in the bipartisan infrastructure agreement, which is going to make natural gas harder to procure, we're actually not going to have lower emissions. We're going to have higher because you're going to have to switch back to coal fire plants. And just for the record, let's also say the world will always demand energy. If you're not getting it from us, 
where we actually do it more safely and more cleanly. You'll get it from Russia. You will get it from China. And they don't care what the climate activists have to say on Twitter. I yield back.